hoping and we're praying that this vocal is actually on this video because we've had some technical difficulties. But we are almost at the end of our journey with adding and subtracting fractions with like and unlike denominators. So I really need us to start really recognizing some patterns in what we're doing because if you recognize these patterns quickly, it's going to make your journey a lot easier. So in this group one here, these three problems that we have in black up here, what is the first thing that you're noticing about those denominators? Just take a look at all three of those denominators and what are you seeing? So I heard some of you say it. All of these denominators only have one is the only common factor between the two of them. <laughs> they don't have any other common multiples besides them. So they have to, we have to multiply them by each other. So in the top one, if I was trying to find a common denominator, it would be 30. Would it not? Take away um, 20 30th equals 7 30th. Are you seeing that? Because 10 and 3 aren't related in any other manner, or in any other way. What about here? Here it would be 4 and 12 twentieths plus 2 and 15 twentieths, which equals 6 and 17 twentieths. And here would be 63, right? So 63, 14 60 thirds plus 9 60 thirds equals 23 60 thirds. What you're noticing about group 1 is that 1 is the only factor of both denominators in this group here, okay? That is one strategy of trying to find a common denominator, okay? And the way we did, figured it out is we used the product of the two denominators to get our common denominator, okay? That's one strategy that, of finding a common denominator. Okay, I'm going to... T t what kinds of things are you noticing with group two? Really look at it, turn to your neighbor, talk about it. I hear what you're saying. One denominator is a factor of the other one. Or a multiple, you can say that there's some kind of, they, they have something in common. So in 14 and 7, we know that 14 is a multiple of 7. 7 is a factor of 14. So we would keep 9 fourteenths and we would Multiply this by 2 and get 4 fourteenths. On this one, 28 is a multiple of 4. Thumbs up if you agree. So we're going to keep the 3 28ths. We're going to multiply by 7, top and bottom, denominator and denominator, 21 28 and we get 24 28 But is 24 28 simple? No. So I got to find the biggest factor that will go into both of those. I'm going to say 4, but I could be wrong. 6 7 But it, see, if you only do 2, you still have it. You still have an. You can still read it. You can make it simple. Oh. Lur. Simple lur. Three and four eighteenths. We want to keep one and times six times six. Six eighteenths. We can't subtract. So now it's twenty two eighteenths. Twenty two take away six. Okay, 16 eighteenths 
and 1, but 16 eighteenths, is that simplified? What number can go into both of these? 4 can go into 16, but it can't go into 18 evenly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try 2, and I get 8 ninths, 1 and 8 ninths. So one strategy to find a denominator is you have common factors. So you keep one the same. You keep you only have to change, convert, or get an equivalent fraction to one side. Okay? Okay, what I'm hearing you say is yes, you have to come up with a common denominator, but why don't we want to do the thing that we did in the first strategy? Why wouldn't we want to multiply them by each other? The answer, you're going to get really big numbers, especially in the case of 30th and 45th. So we need to find a different denominator that's going to be common. So look at these three and figure out what denominator. So if you were doing this top one, 8, and 12. What if you did 8, 16, 24? Those are multiples of 8, right? You would say 12, 24. Oh. Hmm. So what are the multiples of 6? Tell me the multiples of 6. 6, 12, 24. What's the next one? 30. 30. Okay, stop right there. What are multiples of 4? Okay, which one is the first one that matches? Oh, you see that common denominator? So, what about this one? 30, 60, 90, 45. You seen how those common denominators just jumped out at us? So this right here, what I just showed you, this strategy, is listing what? No, what am I doing? What did I, what strategy did I just do? I listed my multiples and I circled the small, the smallest common one. Then I have to go back and figure out what I need to multiply by to make my equivalent fractions. So in this case, I would do 5 eighths and 1 twelfth, we're saying 24, so times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2. So my new problem is 15 24 ths take away 2 24 ths equals 13 24 ths. Thumbs up if you agree. But you see, now that I've done all of this work here, how much simpler it is to figure out my common denominator. Okay, so here, if I'm rewriting this problem, I'm going to go by 2. So 8 and 12, 10, 10 twelfths, take away 4 and 9 twelfths is going to equal 4 and 1 twelfth. You seen how I'm doing that? You should be writing these down so you have some examples in your notebook to refer to tonight. I just basically went over the three different strategies, the big ones, to find a common denominator. You can pick one of these three ways to find your common denominator when you're adding and subtracting unlike fractions, unlike denominator fractions. So here, it's 30 times 1, 2, 3, times 3, and 45 times 2. So you're going to have 30, 3, 90 plus 32, 90 and you have 65, 90 which if you divide by 5, 
equals what, friends? Here, the big thing here is just it's kind of a review. We've been doing this adding and subtracting thing for a couple of weeks now, and this was the big review. Try to find, list your multiples and find one that's the smaller one because if you try to do 30, especially like a number like this, the 30 and 45, do you know 30 times 45 really fast? It's a really big number. It's kind of big. It's five thirties and um, yeah, lots of forties. So on things central tonight, they're going to be flashing you a lot of addition and subtraction um, fraction problems with unlike denominators. There's a question in there that says three different equations what do they have in common? What do they not have in common? And you have to fill in a sentence. So make sure you're reading carefully through those questions. All right.